to let it all go, Neil. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. Free your mind. Free your mind. Like it's 
trying to organize, but uh, at this point it doesn't look that impressive, but there is a cyclonic turning in the, in the uh, wind field around the system, so uh, again it's possible this could become, become classified as a, a drop of pressure uh, later on today. Uh, taking a look at the Atlantic here, we got an area of low pressure uh, that's trying to develop. There's a little bit of a hook nature to clouds uh, earlier today, and the uh, latest uh, satellite loop here does show that hook growing, so that's indicating that we might actually have an area of low pressure now becoming a little bit better organized across that area. Uh, Bermuda it is uh, located uh, right here, and so we think that this uh, developing low will probably move something like this over the course the next 24 hours I should be here, about here by this time tomorrow, late late morning on uh, Friday, Saturday uh, morning, roughly here, and Sunday morning, about right here. So uh, moisture wrapped around the low will probably bring Bermuda some showers and some gusty winds that we hit uh, through tomorrow, Saturday, and into Sunday. Uh, now, Berto, again, is uh, a very uh, discombobulated storm system, again, not, doesn't look too impressive. This is a satellite image taken earlier today. Again, a cold front approaching from the west. Uh, this front will move in on it, absorb Umberto, and the whole thing will then head northeastward. There's the Azores right here. Should stay away from there. Play the satellite imagery here. Um, looks just a, looks like it's just a poorly defined center of circulation here. All the thunderstorms are off to the southeast of it. Here's the cold front approaching. Uh, here's the cold front approaching from the. Uh, from the west here, back across to here. That's pretty much it for the tropics. Again, our main concern for today, again, is the moisture from Manuel moving inland over uh, southwest and western Mexico could produce a phenomenal rainfall throughout this area, causing major flooding and major life-threatening mudslides. That's it for the tropics. I'm AccuWeather.com meteorologist, Dan Kutlock. I am AccuWeather.com meteorologist Elliot Abrams. We're looking at a large area of thunderstorms in the middle of the country, affecting the Great Lakes region while the east remains dry. The main area is cloudy and stretches from Minnesota southwestward through the plains and separate area comes out across Wisconsin into Michigan, Indiana, and parts of western Ohio. Looking at the radars early this morning, 5 a.m. Central, some thunderstorms from southern Lake Michigan across into east central Illinois, others here in West Michigan will come slowly, they're moving, and more in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin, and these are heading toward the Racine, Milwaukee area, and the great Chicago as we go through the morning. Looking at a broader sweep from the radar serving southwest Michigan, you see all the activity here in West Michigan and down into Indiana, and the other thunderstorms not showing quite as prominently because it's out of the range of the scope here in southern Wisconsin. What about the computer models for the next couple of days? Here's this afternoon, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central, showing the rain falling in the six hours before that, which is this morning at midday. See it here from Wisconsin to Indiana. Nothing in the east, though. It's dry. High pressure area sitting here, maintaining control. We jump ahead to Friday. Still a southerly flow of dry air, basically, across the east. A little more humid than it's been, not excessively so. Temperatures mostly in the 70s across the eastern states, but thunderstorms coming in the Great Lakes still. As we go to Saturday, thunderstorms shift eastward, so they're affecting places from central New York, central Pennsylvania, down into the Piedmont of the Carolinas, and then western of the Ohio Valley, slowly inching eastward. And if that motion continues, then on Sunday, showers and thunderstorms are coming through the eastern states, perhaps leading by Sunday afternoon, but Saturday night, Sunday morning, it could be showery. And then if this is right, if this is right, dry weather takes over cooler for the northeast on Monday. Now, we've been debating this the last couple of days as to whether this is really going to happen or some storm from the Gulf will come up the coast and get rain instead. This is a solution that the models are trending toward right now, but we have to remember today's Thursday. This is the forecast for Monday. Things are still changing. And we'll tell you about any of those changes right here on ActiveWeather.com.
and the skies over Colorado opened up and rain fell in what some call biblical proportions. The mountains and canyons acted as funnels, forcing up to 17 inches of September rainfall into the towns of Boulder and Lyons. It filled tributaries of the South Platte River, causing the mass. On September 10th, the skies over Colorado opened up and rain fell in what some call biblical proportions. The mountains and canyons acted as funnels, forcing up to 17 inches of September rainfall into the towns of Boulder and Lyons. It filled tributaries of the South Platte River, causing a massive flooding that could extend downstream into Nebraska this weekend. Now that the rain is at bay in Colorado, families are hoping to return home to find what, if anything, is left. Unfortunately, washed out roads and bridges, and now the threat of contaminated water is keeping Coloradans away. I'm Matt Meteorologist, Mark Bank Hughes, though.